Now turning back to Daniel chapter 6 again, we read in verse 4 that when Darius, who was the king appointed there by Cyrus, was going to appoint Daniel to be the head of the commissioners, the commissioners and satraps, verse 4, began trying to find a ground of accusation against Daniel in regard to government affairs. You see, Daniel was like the chief secretary or the prime minister under the king, controlling all the government affairs, the administration at the age of 90. And they tried to find something because of their jealousy. And we can find situations like that ourselves, where in our place of work, there are people around us who are jealous and who want to find some fault, some small little thing they want to find fault with us with in our work in order to pull us down. Daniel faced it. And it's a tremendous lesson for us how we can face it as overcomers in these last days. Yes, Daniel faced jealousy and we shall face jealousy too in the last days. But it says here they could find no ground of accusation or evidence of corruption. That was his testimony before his enemies. In um, Luke chapter 11, there's a verse, I want to just read it to you. Luke 11, verse 53 and 54, which reminds us of this situation. This is concerning Jesus, Luke 11, 53 and 54. It says, when Jesus left there, the scribes and Pharisees began to be very hostile. And they were jealous of Jesus, just like those uh, Persian commissioners were jealous of this Daniel, who was a Jew, being appointed over them. And it says these people were very hostile and began to question him closely on many subjects. Not to find answers. They were not interested in answers. But they pretended to be spiritual and to ask questions with what reason? Verse 54, plotting against Jesus to catch him in some word that might come out of his mouth. And when we find ourselves in situations like that in our place of work, where people are plotting, waiting to catch us in some one word we slipped up in, we know that's, we don't have to think that's something strange. The men of God in the Bible went through that, Daniel went through it, Jesus went through it. And they both overcame and God stood with them and enabled them to triumph. And the same God who lifted Daniel out, lifted Jesus out, of the plottings of their enemies is there to help us today. That's our encouragement. And so we see in Daniel chapter 6, they waited and they couldn't find anything against him in his work. And brothers and sisters, that's a tremendous thing when people cannot find anything against us in our work. A Christian who is witnessing for Christ and who comes late to office or factory or goes, goes away for long coffee breaks like all the others, slips off half an hour earlier or five minutes earlier. They can find something to accuse him about, but not against Daniel. He was there on time in his office and he didn't go away early. He didn't have any long coffee breaks or whatever breaks they had those days. He was upright. He was faithful in his work. And it says here three tremendous statements. Listen to this, the last part of verse 4. And God grant that can be said of every one of us in our place of work. He was faithful. There was no negligence and no corruption. He was faithful. There was no negligence. Negligence means he did not neglect some part of his work. And he was not corrupt. He never took a bribe. He was fair to all the people. Rich or poor made no difference, showed favoritism to no one. He was faithful in his work, never negligent, never corrupt. Blessed are the Christians who have such a testimony in their place of work today. It's in our place of work that we are to have such a testimony and to be overcomers. No doubt, he suffered for it, as we read later on. 
and we shall suffer for it. Jesus suffered, but that made no difference. At the age of 90, he was faithful, like he was at 17. At the age of 90, he was free from corruption, just like he was at 17. What a tremendous thing. To endure till the end like this. There are few who can have such a testimony. So many people start off so well when they are 17, 18. But after a few years, they look at the corruption of people around and become like them. If Daniel had looked at all the half-hearted compromising Jews around him, he would have been corrupt by the time he was 25. But his eyes were not on the half-hearted compromisers around him. His eyes were on the word of God, God's standards. And he stood true to it no matter what the cost. And brothers and sisters, that's the type of person God is looking for in the world today. Right in our place of work. Daniel wasn't a full-time worker going around preaching like some of the other prophets were. Daniel was a prophet, but he was a prophet who was working in a government office in a heathen country. He was a unique example for us in our day. There's no other example like that in the Bible of a prophet who worked in a secular job in a heathen country. What better example do we need in India and in a country which is full of idols just like India is? A unique example for our country, for people in secular jobs who can be prophets for God, overcomers in these last days. And then these people realize this, verse 5. These men said, we'll never find any ground of accusation against this man unless we find it against him with regard to his religion, with regard to the law of his God. Think of that. The people in our office can say that. The only thing that irritates me about this man is his religion. That's the only thing in which I can find fault with him. Because everything else he's so upright and so honest and so straightforward. That we're in the footsteps of Daniel when we're like that. We don't have to uh, feel sorry for ourselves if we suffer. We'll suffer, sure. Then it says in verse 6, these commissioners and satraps came by agreement. It's amazing how people can team up together when they're jealous. It says Herod and Pilate, who were mutual enemies, never talking to each other, became friends when they wanted to kill Jesus. It's amazing how when they want to finish off a man of God, mutual enemies join up together. I'm sure these commissioners were not the best of friends with each other, but when it came to dethroning Daniel, they got together and they came scheming to their boss, King Darius. And there can be people in our office who scheme and go to the boss and flatter him. That's how many people stay in their jobs, by flattery. Oh, King Darius, live forever. You're never going to die. You live forever and ever. And these stupid idiots who sit there believing all this flattery, softening him up, and then telling lies. Verse 7. All the commissioners of the kingdom, the prefects and the satraps, the high officials and the governors have consulted together that the king should establish a statute and enforce an injunction that anyone who makes a petition to any god or man besides you, O king, for 30 days shall be cast into the lion's den. The very first word was a lie. All. It wasn't all. Daniel wasn't there in that discussion. They should have said all of us except Daniel. And then the king would have smelled something fishy. But they told a lie. And why do I highlight this fact? Just to show that we can face exactly similar situations in our midst where people tell lies to those who are above us, flatter them, scheme against us, all because of jealousy and they can't find any fault against us. It's our faith. It's the fact that we won't give any money for their idolatrous festivals. This example for us to follow. And it says here, Now, O king, Establish the injunction. You see, that no man can be so stupid that nobody should make a petition of any man except to you, O king. But they had flattered him and softened him up and he said, Now establish the injunction and sign the document so that it may not be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians which cannot be changed. And these people knew that the Medes and Persians had made their king... Um, like the Pope, you know, the nearest 
to the present Roman Catholic Pope in the Bible is the Medo-Persian king. When the Medo-Persian king spoke ex cathedra, he was infallible. He was, you couldn't change it. That was it. Forever and ever, that was it. You see, this infallibility doctrine didn't originate in the last century, by the way. It originated 2,500 years ago. Why is it the laws of the Medes and Persians could not be changed? Because that was to show that the king is infallible. When he speaks, that's it. That's infallible. And Darius was such a stupid idiot to believe that. Anyone who believes that today is an equally stupid idiot to think that a man can be infallible. Only God and his words infallible. And it says here, therefore King Darius signed the document. You see the power of flattery. It's fantastic, the power of flattery. Oh, king, live forever. You're infallible. Now, why don't you pass this law? And it was all schemed against one godly man. All the scheming that was going on in the office against one man who stood for God. So true to situations we find that many Christians find themselves were uncompromising in many places today. And King Darius signed the document and we can say that we can face laws like this in our country which are so stupid, we can say. It was such a stupid law that Darius signed. And we can ask ourselves, is God sovereign over it? Was God sovereign in Daniel chapter 6? Well, he's sovereign even today. Over any law that any King Darius or anybody passes, it makes no difference. God can work out his purposes if he can find one upright man, Daniel, who will stand up for him. Yeah? This is something similar to what we read in Revelation 13, 17, where you remember in our study of Revelation, we saw how the Antichrist is going to pass an order in the last days, saying that no one can buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. This is somewhat similar to that. You cannot ask anyone for anything except King Darius. In other words, he is God. That's what the Antichrist is going to do too. He sets himself up as God. You need my permission and my mark to buy or sell. And this is why the book of Daniel has got particular relevance to the days in which we live, the last days before the coming of Christ. 